All right. Well, welcome, everyone. This is David Morgan of TheMorganReport.com with Jeremy Corden, and I'm going to have a second interview with him. It's really a privilege to me. Why? Because this isn't a talker. This is a doer. And in our industry of trying to what I call the it used to be called the honest money movement, sound money, he's done something. He's invented what uh, is called gold back. There's also silver backs. So let's just start at the beginning for people that never heard of you, never heard of a gold back. What was your thought process to even come up with such a unique idea that you could spend gold if you had a, let's say, a finite amount of pure gold that uh, was actually usable and also had to be almost indestructible? I mean, you came up with something that's more than a thinking. I'm sure there was a process involved to make this happen, Jeremy. Take over. Start me from day one. How the heck did a gold back come to fruition? You know, I, I worked for most of my career post-college with a man named Larry Hilton. He drafted the Legal Tender Act here in Utah that passed in 2011. And now we've got half the states in the country that have either passed similar legislation or are trying to. And that's, I'd say that's very much at the heart of the sound money movement. Um, you know, Larry's thought on that was if we could just make state governments, you know, acknowledge gold and silver as money, perhaps people would use it. And unfortunately, what we saw in Utah is that once that law was passed that recognizes gold and silver as money, is we didn't see a huge wave of people trying to use gold and silver as money. And that, that was a bit discouraging. We, we think the reason why is because gold coins in and of themselves aren't uh, a very convenient form of payment. You know, a one ounce gold coin is worth $2,000. A 10th of an ounce gold coin doesn't have the same premium. Uh, so you might be paying $300 for a 10th of an ounce or $280 for a 10th of an ounce. And 10 10th ounce coins don't equal one ounce. So people aren't going around Utah with a little bag around their neck with their gold and silver coins to you know, barter with. Um, they're using credit cards and they're getting cash back and they're they're being offered incentives for for using those that people are excited about. The gold back um, came about in 2019. I bumped into our manufacturing company at an event and they were selling things like, you know, these guys here. And it took a little while of, you know, tinkering around. Um, I had this dream where people were were using these guys as money at a farmer's market and they were trading with them. They were paying with these and they were getting change in gold and the whole thing was in gold. And that eventually became this. So gold backs, the 50 here has 50 times as much gold as the one. And you have all these other denominations and the premium is the same. So it's a it's a it's a cross between uh, 24 karat gold with the spendability and usability of cash, and that's what we started here in 2019. Amazing. Um, I met Larry and was there when the governor signed that <clears throat> into law. Just an aside, but at the time I said to Larry, you know, the usability is a problem, and my solution at that time was. Uh, we need to put a depository in, we need to do a debit card and then it can subtract, you know, grams or grains appropriately, convert it to fiat and pay the merchant. So it's transparent to the merchant and everybody's happy. There is a system like that. In fact, there's a couple, but I like your system better because first of all, you can be out of the banking system. You don't have to be tied to it whatsoever at all, which is a wonderful thing to have, you know, it's like having a gold coin outside the system, but yet it's usable and that's the key. So what was the next step to get other states involved? What what? So Utah does it, okay, you guys are nutcases. You know, how did it spread? You know, we, we wanted to start in Utah. We wanted to do kind of a proof of uh, concept. And we went around and we signed up dozens of business owners that were willing to take gold backs as payment for goods and services. Because you can put something like this out there and you can say, hey, you know, this is, you know, the, the value is about double spot. And people look at these and they say, well, that's, that's cute and that's great and that's wonderful that you're trying to do something, but, but what do I do with it? You know, what, how do I spend it? Who would, who would ever take this? 
you know, the reason why, or part of the reason why the dollar is so valuable is because of the network effect. It's universally accepted. You'll take a dollar because you know you can spend a dollar somewhere else. I was hoping that we could get maybe 10% of business owners in Utah accepting goldbacks as payment. And we found that when we actually talked to business owners, it's closer to a 50% acceptance rate for taking payment in gold. And once we realized that, we went out and you know, now I think we have over 800 business owners in Utah um, taking goldbacks as payment. Goldbacks are nine times more popular at small businesses in Utah than Bitcoin. And it's, why wouldn't they take it? Why wouldn't they take gold? It's a private transaction. It's just like cash. You can be done in moments. There's a, there's a calculator on goldback.com. So we built a calculator on goldback.com and people are going to you know, figure out how many goldbacks they owe. And what we're seeing from the data is that people are using this calculator all over the country. So they're not just using it in Utah at these featured businesses, people are using it all over the United States. And you know, we're starting to see people using this calculator all, all over the world, which is one way to see the adoption. Because if, if somebody buys a gold back in the UK and they spend it in the UK, I have no idea, I have no way of knowing. It's not, it's not in a centralized system the only way I have a hint that it's happening is I, I see them using these calculators in communities all over the place. Right. So you made some changes or progress since we talked last. And lead me through this, but you have now ATMs, is that correct, that you can actually get gold backs from? Yes. Uh, you know, if you go on YouTube or, or go to goldatm.com, we have a company, they're the largest gold or sorry they're the largest bitcoin atm operator in the world i believe and they've gone out they're super excited about the gold back and they're investing heavily in they're investing heavily in developing atms that can dispense gold backs and those are out now you know there, there's a company that that started with bitcoin atms and they've got thousands of those out there and everybody has seen Bitcoin through these Bitcoin ATMs. Now they're investing heavily in putting out thousands of gold back ATMs. And they're doing pilots now, they're, they're in Utah, they're in Nevada. I believe their goal is to get these out into all the states where people can buy gold backs uh, through an ATM machine. So you put in a card to get a gold back, is that right? Uh, right now I think it's cash, but it's also in the early phases. Um, you know, ultimately what we wanna do with the gold back is we want to build a financial system around the gold back. So you can have a digital gold back, you can spend them digitally, and we have various partners that are already in um, kind of the digital precious metal space. And I think you're familiar with who those people are um, that are looking into developing gold back tokens. But imagine, I mean, you could have, in essence, what it, an alternative bank you can have a digital gold back and you can take it out of your account with a gold back ATM. So you have a cash component to a digital system. And I think you have to have both. If you don't have both, if you only have gold coins or gold bars in a, with a digital solution for gold payments, it's uncomfortably similar to a central bank digital currency in that the whole thing's digital, you don't really hold it, and you're tied into a central system for all of your transactions. And that's exactly the kind of system that we're trying to avoid. Couldn't agree more. Uh, I am associated with one, as you are well aware, and uh, we guarantee that you can get your physical. The mm -hmm. problem is two problems. One is the authorities say, well, you gotta be able to give, if you can buy, silver by the gram, you've got to be able to produce a gram. And you can, a 3D printer, you can spit out a gram of silver and mail it to the owner. But that's cumbersome, whereas your solution is a lot better and a lot easier. The problem with going from digital to physical is transportation, packaging, and then a minimum. And I'm with the guys as a minimum. I mean, if I call up any dealer, and I know most of them, and say I want one Silver Eagle, because it's me, they'd probably do it. But there's some that won't. It's a 20 coin minimum. And that makes sense because you've got to get packs. Whereas 
if these become ubiquitous, they're in all states, they're worldwide, and you can go to an ATM, plus the more people that have them in their pocket, the easier it is to transact. Look, I need to load my wallet with uh, ABDC, asset-backed digital currency, gold or silver-backed in most cases, and um, I need it now. Jeremy, look, here's you know 5,000 um, gold backs. Can you please you know make the transaction and you know peer to peer bang you can do it in a matter of seconds no bank no teller involvement nothing so i absolutely am behind you i think it's got to be a a dual reality if you will it's got to be the digital world will be pushed into in all fronts not just on the money sphere but everything's digital as you know i'm not trying to lecture anyone but then the physical reality of it so i see it as really great i mean if you go back to the print out a gram of silver or a gram of gold on it with a 3D printer. I'd much rather pick up that as my printed out unit. Plus, let's go back, I'm gonna circle back a little bit. Tell me a little bit more about the physicality of this as far as the indestructibility. I mean, these things are amazing. Can you just mention that? Sorry, I'm throwing you two things at sure, once. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say a gold back is indestructible, but they are very tough. Okay. Um, so what you have is it's gold that's sandwiched between two layers of polymer. Every single gold back is unique. They're not foil. They're made through a process called vacuum deposition. And vacuum deposition is the same technology that puts gold on microchips. So it's very, it's very high end. It's very fancy. Um, and we're really proud of how, how cheaply we can do it. You know, in the past, if you wanted to go down to a thousandth of an ounce, you're looking at, you know, three or 400% premiums and you have, you know, a, a piece of gold that's a, a fraction of the size of the white part of your, you know, pinky fingernail, right? I mean, it, it's tiny. It's absolutely tiny and it's, you know, maybe it's fake, you know, there's not a great way to test it. Um, but it's not very impressive is my point. Whereas this, these are visually impressive to people that don't even understand precious metals they see this, they see the gold and they they want it. And that's part of what makes gold such a great money is just how attractive it is. So that's, you know, and then, and then of course you have the interchangeability between gold backs where the premium on the 25 is the same and you could turn in a 25 gold back and get 25 ones. Um, you know, since the last time we talked, I'll tell you, we're seeing, an exponential growth in adoption of gold backs and in interest. Um, I believe we just hit about $125 million worth of gold backs in circulation. And they haven't even been out for five years yet. Phenomenal. Well, I kind of threw you a curveball. Uh, let's go back to the ABDCs. I've made the bold statement, maybe wrong, that I think the next leg up in the crypto world will be asset-backed digital currencies because when you get to the bottom line, and I am a purist in some ways, a lot of these things are backed by nothing more than digits on a computer. That's not what we want in our movement. We want, you know, honest money for honest people, true exchange of something of value for your labor. And of course, you've solved that problem. So tell me more about the interface that we just discussed a moment ago of gold backs and digital currencies, how you see that playing out. You can get down to the, you know, the ability to ship off so many gold backs out of your digital account. It's not going to cost that much. It's easy to collect. I mean, it solves a lot of problems. Would you speak to that a little further, please? Absolutely. I, so if you're a company and you, you sell a digital gold product, one of the problems that this space has is it's a bit of a race to the bottom. You know, how, how cheap can I sell my 100 ounce bar that's backing my gold digital currency? You know, can I do it for 2%, 1%, half a percent? You have these companies and there used to be about 400 uh, gold, silver, um, crypto companies. And now, you know, there's maybe like a dozen. Um, so you're starting to see the survivors in this space by offering gold backs, there's a better margin, which allows these companies to do the marketing and build the infrastructure required to be successful. Um, but also to get to your point, if somebody wants, if somebody only has seven gold backs in their account, they can mail out their entire account with these gold backs. 
And then they have something that isn't just, you know, a tiny little, you know, a, a grain or a, a flake of gold. They, they have something that's never been counterfeited, that's unlikely to be counterfeited. This is the most advanced anti-counterfeiting technology in the world. And they can spend it and use it wherever they're at. So it's, I think that what you're going to see over the next year or two is you're going to see more digital um, gold-backed currency options through companies that exist today that are offering gold accounts. We're, we're talking to a whole bunch of them right now. We have some pending projects that aren't fully released yet where I don't want to get ahead and announce a major partnership, but you know, you're going to see at least one or two of them this year. And eventually, I think I think everybody that's in this space is going to be offering um, gold back accounts, just because it, it makes a lot of sense and it solves a lot of problems. It does. It does make. <laughs> just repeat back. It does make a lot of sense, and it does solve a, a multitude of problems. I mean, as I already outlined. So take me through the vision of gold backs. Um, as far as uh, we're in that world of um, more honest money circulating you. I think you said 125 million after five years. Usually these things hit that tipping point, especially under the economic conditions the world is suffering under right now. And so the adoption rate accelerates. Do you see that taking place? And if so, what does it look like to you? We're, we're seeing exponential growth with gold backs. Um, I don't think it'll be long before we're measuring how many gold backs are out there in billions. It's very exciting. And for us, you know, a lot of it's just how do we keep up with manufacturing? Uh, the first three years of gold back production, it was a huge struggle to get enough gold backs out to meet the market demand. So, you know, very few precious metals dealers had gold backs. We couldn't get them to everybody. The ones that did have them weren't selling them very well. They weren't following any of the best practices. They're gouging on the ones and they weren't selling them interchangeable and they didn't, they called them foil and you know, we, we had such a hard time keeping the gold back in stock that you almost don't want to correct anybody because you're selling out all the time. And, you know, it was only within the last six months or so that we've been able to boost manufacturing of gold backs to the point where we can chase bigger partnerships. And we're starting to put a little bit more work into onboarding uh, local coin stores that can get uh, distribution contracts for gold backs. So we want to get gold backs into all the coin stores in the United States. We want to get them uh, with all the major bullion dealers. We want to get them with these big online players. And we're starting to have the bandwidth to, to really work on that in a big way. Um, and it's exciting. You know, once the brakes are off this thing and we're, you know, developing marketing and sales, it's, you know, we, we went the first, to give you an idea of just how much demand there is for inflation-proof currency, we went the first three and a half years as a company with no marketing department whatsoever, and we were still selling out of gold backs. Amazing. It's yeah. just, you know, people would buy these, they'd buy a stack of gold backs, they get a stack of a hundred, and they just give them out to everyone they knew. They couldn't even help themselves. They're excited. And yeah. they should be excited. You know, there's, there's been nothing let me, like let me stop you there. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've tried to spread the word in multiple ways. Of course, with my platform, I've certainly had the opportunity to spread the word through you know, over 20 years but let's just take a regular me you know and i'm downtown having a meal and i pop one of these or more than one but i leave it as a tip what are your thoughts about you know people get excited and just hand them out which i've done uh I've taken them to gold shows usually um i just hand them out right of course people there usually it's a investment conference leaning toward resources or gold, not always, sometimes they're mainstream like the money show. Regardless, um, what's your thought as far as someone helped to spread the word? I had the idea, I don't know if you thought of it, maybe you have, of you know maybe on the ones and then maybe saying something on the back explaining what it is and how to get involved. Is that a wacky idea or what are your thoughts? Yeah, maybe, I mean, we could, we could add a sticker to the back that people could peel off. That, that might right. be a great idea. Um, you know, it's only 30, 40 seconds, and we have the website on there, too, to just explain what it is. Right. Um, the precious metal space has a problem. Um, the problem, if you look at the precious metal space, is you only have 2% of Americans that own gold. 
Right. And the average age of people going to coin stores, going to online gold dealers. Do you care you care to guess what the average age is for people buying? Oh gold? well, you know, I've been in it since I was a kid because of just the way things fell in my lap. But I would guess the average age to be sixty three. That's a very good guess. I think you're I think you're dead on. It's either it was sixty two last year, so maybe it's sixty three this year. That's the average age of gold ownership in the US. And if you look at that demographic, these are people that as kids, they had silver dimes, right? I mean, gold, gold and silver was part of the monetary system. And you know, you're you're connected to that. Now, younger people were were getting ravaged by inflation. You know, it, you can look on the online forums. Younger people feel like the economic ladder has been pulled up and there's no opportunity anymore, and the money's quickly losing all its value. And and you know the american dream is is dead and that everything is you know going to get worse so you know we're definitely feeling inflation but we can't afford two thousand dollar gold coins and what are we going to do with them i mean you, the experience of a young person going into a coin store and you've got you know your guy with the gun and the glass case and you know all the different numismatic coins i mean that's you know it, you know you see people that are 63 in there right um, the gold back in a very big way, to answer your question, is you have people that are older, that are wiser, that, that understand, and they'll buy a stack of 100s, and they can turn anybody they see or come across, whether it's a family member, a grandchild, a niece, a nephew, uh, the waitress, and they can turn anybody into someone that owns precious metals for the very first time for, you know, just over $4. And it's powerful because these young people we're seeing them they'll they'll come in and they'll say oh this is amazing this is okay it's like inflation proof and then they start their journey you know six months later they're buying gold backs uh, another six months later they're finding you know ancient coins and they they kind of get introduced to the rest of the precious metal space but now they're spending and using gold as money we have introduced over a million new users into the precious metal space in the last four years in the average age of those users, as far as we can tell, is between the ages of 35 and 40. Fantastic. Brand new to precious metals. So we're growing the space. Even, even, even companies that don't really like the gold backs or they, you know, so dealers that don't really care, you know, for the gold backs, oh, it's a high premium product. And you know, we don't know about that, or we don't carry that, or you know, the company has ever reached out to me. They're starting to see more customers because we're adding. We're, we're educating so many people um, and getting them started with precious metals. Yeah, I was just thinking a couple of things. I don't want to take too much of our time, but you know, well, the first big purchase I made in gold uh, was at a coin dealer in Los Angeles. I walk in, I'm a little nervous. I've got my cash, I get my gold coins, and the dealer put on the table and he showed me like a stack like that. And you know, that's a Volkswagen. And then he said, a stack like that, that's a Mercedes. You know, and in that moment, I had kind of the epiphany of just how much value there is per unit. In other words, you're getting a lot of value. As you said, $2,000 per coin in fiat. Uh, the gold hasn't changed. You know, I still have those, some of those gold coins from way back when. But I remember this girl came in after me in this kind of beat up Volkswagen, <laughs> and she was turning in her gold for fiat. She had a pretty big stack, and I just kind of so judge the book by its cover, and I'm off track somewhat. But I'm going to switch up on us, <clears throat> Jeremy. I need to distress this. I'd be beat up on the comments if I didn't. And that's uh, what we've already addressed. I already know partial the answers because I'm a good listener. But silverbacks, <clears throat> let's talk about that for a moment and uh, give the reasons why and why not, and uh, just so I can have it on the record the second time because. I've got a bigger audience. I'm getting a younger audience. I'm making a documentary on sound money. Um, I'll say it publicly. I want you in it because it's. I've saw. I talked about the problem my whole life. <clears throat> I want to make this movie more about an intro on the problem, but uh, exit that's mostly about solutions. This is a solution. Anyway, talk about silverbacks with wood, please. You know, we had hundreds, if not thousands, of requests for silverbacks. And it's funny if you read these emails, we get these. You know, it's it's request number 700, right? And they email in, they say, hey, you know, I've got an idea and you guys won't believe it and it's gonna blow your minds. But 
what if you guys did silverbacks? And we get these, you know, almost every day. You know, what if you guys did silverbacks? And initially, I thought that's ridiculous. And the reason why it's ridiculous is to make something, um, you know, to make a silverback. If it costs me a dollar fifty to make a gold back, to split an ounce of gold into a thousand pieces, if it's a dollar fifty per unit, it's at least a dollar fifty per unit for silver. Except a thousandth of an ounce of silver is worth what? It's like two cents. You know, people beat me up on the premiums on gold backs. I'm I'm actually really proud of how cheap we can do a gold back. If you figure you can do a thousandth of an ounce unit that's serialized and has never been counterfeitable and is cheaper than all the other bars and other, all the other little products that are that small and not just a little bit cheaper, but a lot cheaper. You know, we, gold backs are, for what they are, I, I, they're, they're very inexpensive in terms of premium. That's not true for silver. Right. So I thought, well, you know, that, that just kills silver backs right in the water. You know, we, we shouldn't do that. I mean, we'd have a, you know, a 10,000% premium on these things. But people kept asking and they, they kept wanting them. I thought, okay, well, you know what? Do you know what else doesn't have a whole lot of value in terms of melt? NFTs, cryptocurrency, the dollar, you know, all these other things that are multi, you know, billion, if not multi-trillion dollar markets. So we went out and we did a, a silver back as an experiment just for fun. And we told everybody, we said, if you're worried about premiums, this product isn't for you. We're doing this for fun. We're gonna put out 100,000 silverbacks. We're gonna number them from one to 100,000. We're gonna grade the first, you know, 5,000 or so, the first thousand are purple. Um, and we're gonna put them out there. Um, we ended up giving an exclusive deal to a company called Bullion Max. I, I don't know if they're in business still. I, I believe they got bought by JM Bullion so JM Bullion owns the exclusive rights for Silverbacks uh, in terms of being an exclusive distributor. And that's true for ungraded Silverbacks. So you can still buy graded Silverbacks through a lot of different distributors. Uh, if you want an ungraded Silverback, you can go through JM Bullion. Um, and they, they've done well. I, I don't think there's a whole lot of ungraded Silverbacks left. We, we haven't really pushed them a whole bunch, but every time we get one of these emails now, we can, you know, point them where to go. And the first thousand silverbacks that were graded and were a different color, those sold out almost immediately. I think the last one that I saw went off on eBay for about $500. It's got three cents worth of silver in it. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, which is cool. You know, it's, it's a cool product. It's definitely for fun. And unlike an NFT or unlike a Bitcoin, you can hold a silverback and it's a similar sales pitch. You know, they're special and there's only so many of them out there. And you know what number you have. And it's, you know, it's almost more akin to like, uh, like print art or something like that. So I think we will do more silverbacks. Um, we're doing another project with JM Bullion right now. Um, that's like a silverback. It's going to look very similar. I don't know if they're out yet, and I don't want to get ahead of uh, marketing their product if they haven't released it yet. I don't. I don't want to get an angry call. Why would you talk about that? But you're you're going to see more things like silverbacks um, coming out because you know it, it's popular and people people really like them. So I, I think you will see future silverbacks. Um, you know, they, we might do it a little bit different in the future. Uh, might make some tweaks. We might do a smaller run. Um, but yeah, the first silverbacks out there, you know, did did really well for the most part. It's interesting. You know, I just saw, I have this on my desk, Jeremy. It's slightly off topic, perhaps. I think these are called Valcami. So you mm -hmm. can actually bend those out. And if I remember correctly, this is 10 ounces. So mm -hmm. I think each one is like, tenth of an ounce or something anyway it's kind of the idea um in a more let's say uh, our old school way of having um divisible silver uh it's very tough i think you did it you did an excellent job and re-educated me about silverbacks and thank you publicly for sending me some silverbacks unbelievable cherished i mean the priceless you know it's not the silver in it that's the point it'd be nice if you could uh i would think that's my thought 
But regardless of the reality, the artwork is phenomenal. And I mean, I'm not a big NFT guy. I think it has its place in a different perspective than most think of it. But regardless of my thoughts, that is one of the most beautiful pieces of art and silver I have ever seen. And I'm not saying it. You didn't know I was going to say it. this isn't rehearsed. We talked about it ahead of time. But I was, frankly, expecting a lot. And when I got it, it blew my expectations out the door. I was like, whoa, this is phenomenal. So congratulations. You obviously have some creativity beyond you know what we need in the monetary system, but some artistic something or someone on your staff. I won't credit you with it. I don't know who did the design, but it's phenomenal. <clears throat> well, I'm I'm glad you love it. And and that's the thing. It's you know, I, I've met a lot of people that are brand new to precious metals and they're finding these things and, and it is art and it is beautiful, you know, not not every, you know, most things that we have, they're not, they're worth a lot more than the melt value. You know, gold backs, silver backs, they have a value, not a premium. Yeah. You know, if I ask you, it's like, what's the melt value of your car? It's like, it, it's not even relevant to know, right? It's your car has a value. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I won't come. I had something the Sammy Hagar song about paper money. He talks about, you know, $15,000 car which was very expensive when he made that song and melted down. I got a thousand pounds of junk. That's one of the lines in the song coming back to you. I'm getting off track. So I want to just give the floor to you. Is there anything that we have not discussed that you would like to give out to our viewers regarding anything to do with your thoughts on precious metals, sound money, states, rights, gold backs, silver backs, anything. And if not, just give us a summary where we can see you find you, to your podcast, you have a YouTube channel because you've definitely done a great deal. Um, my perspective is we see a lot of talk in the industry, uh, but it's just that uh, you're a man of action and that's where we get satisfaction. We have satisfaction when we're actually trading real for real. It's satisfying to give something of value for something of value. There's just something about the human experience when we're being honest with each, with each other. We basically, in my opinion, we're actually keeping that humanity back and forth, whereas uh, instead of looking for what we can get, it's something we can give and get back at the same time. Anyway, back over to you. You know, I I, I applaud everything that you're doing to advance sound money. Um, I think that the very bedrock of our society requires sound money. It, it was invented by the ancient Greeks. And that's really where Western civilization was birthed. And, you know, all these freedoms that we care about so much would be impossible if we can't freely trade um, with each other. And, that, and that's really what the Goldback is about. It's, it's protecting those very fundamental freedoms and offering something that's better than what's out there right now. Um, you know, some people have a hard time with gold backs, you know, but they're using cash, right? Which is, you know, quickly losing value and has, you know, no melt value. We're trying to up our game at gold back. Um, we're hitting a point now where we can expand. So we're, we're trying to do it the right way. We have a dozen different major partnerships developing. I, I could tell you who they were. You'd probably recognize every single name. Um, that are coming out this year. So goldbacks are, are in a bit of a breakout uh, pattern right now where they're becoming a lot more mainstream uh, and a lot more accepted now that they've been around for a little bit and that we can do more of them. Um, I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I, I see this project as, as more than just building a, a business. I, I feel like there's almost something sacred to doing something that protects individuals and, and communities at, at this level. And I, I'm very honored for everybody and grateful to everybody that's participating and helping advance this, including you. Thank you for sharing your platform and, and introducing so many people to you know this solution with Sound Bunny. Um, if you wanna learn more, um, you can learn more on goldback.com. Uh, we've, got, we've got an email list there. Um, you know, you can see, you know, where to get gold backs. You can see some of our partnerships. You can see a, a blog on there. You can see where to spend them. 
I uh, see the calculator. So we, we've got some resources there. Um, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube about gold backs. And, you know, I'm hoping to put out um, a lot more content this year. So um, thank you. My pleasure. We'll wrap it up there. This is not our last interview. <laughs> I will be back. We will be back together. And um, God bless us all. We have a mission. And, uh, and I think you summed it up very well. Thank you for your time. No, thank you.